Hey YouTube, it's Weird Paul. Today I'm back to answering subscriber questions, and I'm going to answer questions about my collections. Garuz asked how I got into collecting. When I was just old enough to use a pair of scissors, I would cut things out of the newspaper and save them in an empty bread bag. Somewhere, there's a picture of me holding one of those bread bags full of clippings, but we haven't been able to find it. After that, I started collecting things like bottle caps, which I had seen Bert collect on Sesame Street, matchbooks, which my mom had collected, gum wrappers, this is the only one I have left, trading cards, and postage stamps. Mr. Metal Burrito asked why I have so much old packaging and toys still. The reason is, unlike many kids' parents, my parents let me keep whatever I wanted. The things I kept, I kept because I liked them, or I thought that someday they might be important or valuable. As for the old packaging and labels, my mom saved those because in the 70s and 80s, you could often mail them into the companies and get a cash back refund or cool gifts or toys. Companies don't really do that much anymore. Lago Verde asked if my family never threw anything away and if being a pack rat was something I learned from my mother. First, let's dispel that myth that we never threw anything away. Almost every summer in the 80s, I went on a binge throwing stuff away, both stuff that I'd saved and stuff that our family didn't need. We'd fill up paper grocery bags full of stuff to put out for the trash. Sometimes we'd have nearly 40 in one week. And I did learn to save things from my mom. Waste not, want not, is what she learned from her mother. Jack McCloskey asked, which decade is my favorite to collect from, and why? Well, it might be obvious that the 80s is my favorite decade to collect from, but the reason why might not be obvious. I like collecting things from the 80s, because when I was younger, there were a lot of things that I wanted that I never got. Now, I can get those things by collecting them. Gregor Klagan asked if I ever collected any sports cards when I was younger. I did. Mostly I have baseball cards, but also some football cards, some hockey cards, and one basketball card. Mr. Boob Tube asked if I still listen to disco music on an 8-track, or have I upgraded to a cassette player? Well, honestly, I've never really listened to disco music. I do have a cassette player but I also have this awesome portable 8-track player that I can wear on a strap and carry around. Oh. Flipper5104 asked if I collect audio cassettes. I do. I have around 700 audio cassettes that are a mix of actual releases, mixtapes, and tapes of me talking in the late 70s and early 80s. Henry S. asked if I have any CED movies, Video 8 movies, or laser discs. I don't have any CED movies. I don't have any Video 8 movies either, but I do use Video 8 cassettes sometimes to film on. I have one Laserdisc item. This Star Wars Original Trilogy Laserdisc set that I got at Christmas 2015, given to me by the Adventure Time Guys podcast. Flipper5104 asked if I have any DVDs and Blu-rays or just VHS. I have a pretty decent DVD collection, over 700 DVDs. I just got a Blu-ray player for Christmas 2015, so I only have 10 Blu-rays. Scott Coakley asked what my biggest collection is. By number of items, my biggest collections are vinyl records and VHS tapes at over a thousand each, cassette tapes and DVDs at over 700 each, and hundreds of books and magazines. But space-wise, my largest collection is my vintage video game collection, which takes up one whole wall in one room. Garrison Newkirk asked what the rarest record is in my collection. Alice Cooper's Schools Out is not a rare record in itself. But an original pressing with the pair of underwear still on it is very rare. I also have an original pressing of Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart on the Straight Records label. One way that you can tell it's an original pressing is that Song 6 on Side 1, Moonlight on Vermont, is mislabeled Moonlight in Vermont on the record label. I have many other obscure records that I'll do a video on someday. Ghostly Games asked if I collect any newer video games. The newest systems that I own are a PS2, an original Xbox, and a Nintendo GameCube. Most of the games I have for them are retro kind of games. My favorite one that is not older is Luigi's Mansion. Larry Bundy Jr. asked, what is the single largest item in my collection? Well, the largest items in my collection would probably be my old video game consoles. And the largest one of those I have would be the ColecoVision. Most of the things that I collect are smaller items. Larry Bundy Jr. and Great Turning both asked if I catalog the things in my collection so I don't accidentally buy them twice. I do catalog some of my collections. I keep a list in my phone of my film books, magazine issues, volumes of manga, 
45 RPM picture sleeves and LPs, which I had to do because I was accidentally buying doubles. If I had more time, I'd catalog more things. Otherwise, it's all up here. I should stress that I've almost always been a budget collector. I rarely pay more than a dollar for anything. And that includes records, DVDs, CDs, toys, and anything else. It's because I don't ever really have much money. Mug Melman asked if I've ever sold any things from my collection because I got overwhelmed by the amount of stuff. I have sold things, but not because I got overwhelmed. It was because I needed money to pay my bills. I now regret selling some of the things that I did. Rusty Nichols asked what are my favorite things to collect. Well, I think it would be records that I've been looking for and small toys. Heather Heaton, Mr. Cincinnatian, and Des D'Autre Tum all asked what my favorite thing is that I've collected, the one that I prize the most. There's so many, it's hard to decide, but I will show you one thing that I thought I would never have, and one day I found it. Around 1990, I used to go to our public library and look at a set of reference books called the Motion Picture Guide. There were movies listed in there that I'd never seen anywhere else. I got the address of the publisher and wrote them a letter asking them how much it would be to buy the set of 12 books. They said it was about $500. I couldn't afford that. One day, around 2009, I was at a library book sale, and there it was. At the book sale, they charged a dollar each for hardback books. I got the whole set for $12. Snoop Dogg Dank Kush asked how many collections I have. I don't know, I never counted, but it seems like it must be over 100. I had a number of people, including Larry Bundy Jr., Garuz, Lucy Foster, and Richard Terry Ann ask if I could show where I keep my collections. So, before I make any more Q&A videos, I'm going to make a video showing all of you where and how I keep all of my collections in my house. Thanks, YouTube.